Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardcore but kind of core episode. In the last episode, we built up this fantastic automatic tree farm and sniffer area, but today it's finally time to tackle a big problem in this world. We've done so many projects and have accumulated so much stuff. So we're stepping it up today and building up a huge auto sorting storage system. I already have a spot in mind for this, making use of the mountain range behind our base. I have worked a bit between episodes on the pond that we made and I think flying under the little bridge here can serve as a fantastic entrance into the storage. And a quick pop into free cam reveals all this space that we have to work with. This is gonna be one of the toughest projects yet, so let's get started. And while I may not know a ton about auto sorting systems, I do know that they take a ton of redstone. So I think we should check out how much redstone we have and then probably gonna have to go mining. Yep, I don't think this is anywhere near enough. That's okay, it'll be worth it, right? So I headed down into my old wither tunnel and then I spent some time just strip mining below the ground to hopefully find a bunch of redstone. And once I had a pretty long tunnel, I just started making branch mines off the sides. I know you're supposed to go five, but I kept forgetting because I was listening to some music and I was singing and then I would realize and then it just, you know, anyways. A short while later, I'm ready to fortune up all of the diamonds in redstone that we got down in the caves because I did find quite a bit of diamond as well. We can build up our little flex pile that we always do and make sure to end it with all of our diamonds that we got. And then you know the drill, we're gonna mine this all up and see how much diamond and how much redstone we get. Honestly, I'm not sure how much redstone to expect, but the diamonds were about 40, which is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. And for the redstone, it looks like we got about eight stacks from one stack of redstone ore. So that's pretty good and that'll get us started at least. Okay, but we actually have to talk about something else and that's that I've never really built anything without a tutorial for redstone before and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually take some time and go into a creative world and just try to figure out how to make a storage system and then I'll bring you back when I'm done. Creative mode froggy here. It's been a couple of hours and I'm in a super flat world. You guys might recognize some of the builds here. Sometimes I just build here, you know. I have sort of learned from a tutorial how to put together a basic item sorting system. So I'm gonna link that video in the description if you guys wanna learn how to make one of these as well. And I've gone through a few different iterations of how I want the storage system to work. Like this one had honey blocks and stuff. This one over here, I just kind of copied and pasted so I could fix it because it wasn't working. And then I went through this design. And finally we get to this one over here. And this is sort of what I want to go for. It's a very tall, very wide storage, but it's going to have room for all the different craftables and variants, as well as like auto sorting the main logs. And then underneath you can put bulk logs or stripped logs in there. The top section up here is just for aesthetics because you know I have to make it pretty and it's just decorative. And I actually really love this design. I feel like it's going to fit the rosewood pretty well. I hope you guys are liking it too so far, although we haven't built it yet. And the final thing I have to figure out is kind of what items I'm going to be storing. So I'm going to be doing four different wings off of like a main entrance into the storage system. And I'm sort of breaking down items into the different spots and then having some extra stuff left over. Some of it might be manually sorted because I don't know how big I want this system to be. But I'm trying to group blocks in a way that makes sense to me and in a way that I'll actually like look at them and use them. And this may change. It may not be exactly like this, especially because I don't even have some of these blocks like Prismarine. I don't have any of yet. All in all, I'm pretty excited to start this out. So let's head over to our other world and get started. Actually taking a moment to think this over, it would probably be better if I go get another pickaxe, another netherite one, so that we can go to the Enderman farm a lot less while we're digging. So first we'll go get some sand. Then we're gonna head into the nether. We'll dig down to Y15. We'll mine out a tunnel and then place down all of our TNT. And then of course, we'll light it off and watch it go boom. Then we'll gather up that ancient debris, buy a new pickaxe, slap all those enchantments on it, and then we'll upgrade it. That literally took me less than 20 minutes. So I'm feeling pretty lucky and pretty confident right now and I'm ready to dig, so let's go. So I set up my beacon underground and then I started to dig out a way that you would fly in and out of the storage system. Once that was done, I took advantage of this natural cave to start carving out a little area that would be the main entrance kind of hall to the storage system. I tried to keep this a very smooth shape so that way the wings when I put them in wouldn't look out of place. And then after I was happy with the shape, I started digging out the wings. And I won't show you the hours and hours I spent digging, but trust me, I did this for all four sections. Seven hours and two and a half nearly broken netherite pickaxes later, here we are. What a grind, but we are here. I have mined out all of these areas back here for the actual storage and all the redstone and all that stuff. 
it's definitely looking pretty rough right now. I mean, it is definitely in the trust the process stage. We're gonna have to dig up some more so that we can make the rooms taller. And yeah, it's a, a lot of work. It's a big project. That being said, I've got a ton of materials. I'm gonna go repair all of my pickaxes at the Enderman farm. And then I'm probably gonna go mine some wood because I need to get out of this cave for a little bit. After repairing my tools, I went to the mangrove swamp nearby and chopped about nine stacks of mangrove wood, hoping that this would be enough for our storage. While I was out, I also stopped at the dark oak forest to gather some red mushroom blocks and some dark oak. I stopped by the super smelter to grab some nether bricks and then crafted them into red nether brick. After that, I headed down into the tree farm to use almost my entire bone meal supply to gather a shulker load of spruce. We have enough wood to last us for a while for making chests and decorations, but I think that I want to grab a couple of villagers. For one, I want to repair my hoe so I can collect a bunch of azalea leaves, but I also want to use redstone lamps. And for that, I'm going to need some glowstone and also redstone. So I think it would be smart to get a couple of cleric villagers. That way I can trade for emeralds to get those items. Unfortunately, that means it's time to expand the villager hallway, but don't worry, we're going to be making them a house. I know I promised that a lot, but I'm making a storage system so I can more accurately organize all my materials and see what I have. I always have more success when I stay more organized, and so I'm bringing that energy into 2024 and finally organizing my messy, messy world. About 20 minutes later, we've got four cleric villagers, and yeah, this one has glowstone. I'm hoping that the other ones also have glowstone. Is that a tray that they always have? Regardless, it's still nice. That way we can make redstone lamps. And it might not be much, but at least it's a renewable source of redstone so I don't have to go mining. The villagers homes is a problem for future Froggy as now I'm going to focus on grabbing some azalea leaves. And I literally did spend the rest of my bone meal on this, but I don't intend to keep any of the regular azalea leaves, only the flowering ones and turn the regular azalea leaves back into bone meal. And now that all that's taken care of, I'm actually ready to start working in here. We're going to start by removing this innermost stone for a frame for the hallways. And we're going to get rid of some of this too. And for that frame, I'm going to be using some stripped dark oak as we do in this world. And it's going to be 10 blocks high. I'm also going to add a cross beam here going all the way across. But before I can finish that, I actually need to put this beam in. Oh, we're going to have to dig out so much more space in the middle up here for this to be tall. We'll finish that off with another beam. And that's the basic idea for our framing. Obviously, it still has to be detailed. Very, very detailed. Before we detail, though, we're going to take on this stretch of blocks and then carry it around the entire room. So this is starting with removing the old stone that was already there. And then we can start adding in our pattern blocks, which are going to be stripped dark oak, red mushroom block and red nether brick. So a pattern like that. And then I'm just going to carry this up 10 blocks as well. So it matches up with the framing for the hallway. And when it's fully done, it looks something like this, although it is a little bit dark over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some torches on the walls just temporarily so that no mobs spawn. But also you can see just how rich the colors are and how well they work together. And I think they're really going to complement this space. So yeah, I'm going to carry this around the entire room. And a short while later, this is how it's all looking together, but it's still a little bit dark in here and I kind of want to remove some of the torch spam. So I think it's going to be important to hang some lighting and probably make some redstone lamps. We can make a bunch of those and then we'll place them in the ground with a redstone torch underneath them. On top of that, I want to craft down some spruce trap doors and then some spruce stairs as well. And let's use those to make some archways into the different hallways. And then as you guys saw over the archways, I have this little other section and I want to just make that kind of decorative as well with some more spruce kind of like arches. But in here, we're also going to hang a lantern on a chain as I think that looks pretty cool. And it does leave us some space for like leaves and flowers if we want to add that up there as well. Now all four archways have the lanterns with the chains and yeah, I like this. Now, obviously we still have to bring up this wall up to the hole where you can like fall down in, but I'm going to worry about that a little bit later and I'm going to work on the floorway in here and getting this all sorted. I mined up all the stone on the floor in the middle of the room and then I went back in with some deep slate. Now deep slate is kind of an interesting choice here, honestly. I originally wanted something a little bit lighter to lighten the mood of the room and not have it be so dark. 
but I feel like Deep Slate actually fits the theme that I'm going for a little bit better than lightening this up as it kind of gives that cave feeling. I then spent some time fixing up the drop in the bottom of the pool so then it looked like this afterwards. And then it was finally time to start moving on towards building the storage system. I decided while I was building, I wasn't exactly going to follow the example that I made, but it would be pretty close and like based on that. The main difference is that I'd be making small pods along here, as you can see by the stairs, and I'd be storing items in pods of five. The pods would be broken up by these dark oak wooden beams that are decorative and would help me later to make archways. And each pod would either get barrels and chests or just barrels. I added stairs along the top to round out the area, but also for decorative purposes later. And then I added in the beams as well. And after I was finished on this side, I repeated the process on the other side. And now here we are with another progress update. As you can see here, I've got a pretty good start on this, although it is definitely not done. It's gonna be longer in that direction. And well, I guess those aren't finished either, forgive me. I've got the floor in and it might get a little bit of tweaking, but I've got all the blocks placed out where I wanna sort them to. And then I've got these redstone lamps here just as placeholders. Up above, I made these archways that kind of lead into these decorative areas with the red mushroom block, but I'm actually not sure if the redstone will fit if I have the mushroom blocks there. So I definitely need to check that because if we come around this corner, you can see the back and yeah, there's only one block of space between where the redstone's going to go and where the red mushroom blocks are, but I'm not going to know if that's going to work until I put the redstone in. So that's what we're going to work on next. Okay, so bear with me on this. I've crafted up a bunch of redstone stuff, including a bunch of hoppers, which we're gonna add into the back of the chest here. The reason that we're not putting them into the barrels is that the barrels are gonna be manually sorted by me. There's gonna be a lot of manual sorting that's going on in this storage system still. It's not gonna be fully automatic. Keep that in mind. Now I've crafted up some stone bricks from all of the stone that we've mined out and we'll continue to run it along here as well. And we'll place some redstone torches here to lock the hoppers on the blocks that we just placed. This block is gonna hold the repeaters. And the reason that I am doing it this way is just because I really just don't think there's any need for me to store every single item in the game. Like I think having just the main bulk items is probably good enough for the way that I play Minecraft. I just don't ever foresee myself having like two double chests worth of like mangrove fence gates, you know what I mean? At the very end of this storage, I'm going to add an overflow. So if I do put a shulker and there's an item that doesn't have a place to go, it can go to the overflow. And then I can just check that manually and then sort them myself. I think that's gonna be the best way to try to save on hopper lag as this is pretty close to my main base and I'm a little bit nervous for what all these hoppers are going to do. But we're not gonna fully know that until we build the system. So here I am placing down the comparators and falling. So I'm just going to see how it goes and if we have to make adjustments later on and remove some parts from being auto sorted, then I guess we'll make that call when the time comes. Anyways, these hoppers are facing into the comparators as these are going to be the actual item filter hoppers. So I've renamed a stack of sticks as it's very important that this is an item that you won't ever stack through the system. I'll probably never make sticks that are named this ever again. And I'm not 100% sure why you put them in the last four slots. That part is still kind of like jumbled in my brain. But like I said, the video that I watched to learn about these systems is going to be linked in the description. So you guys can also check it out if you want to learn more about this system. All right, so I've got to add the item I want filtered by the system. So in this case, it's going to be oak logs. And then those aren't going down because I need to place redstone. That's right. And I think this redstone down here activates the repeater so that the items actually go into the chest. I think, I think that's how it works. It turns on and off the redstone torch. And then when we go back over here, our oak logs should only have 41, right? And they do. So if I add in some more oak logs to this hopper, we should see it going through the system and it looks like it is, and it should make it into the second chest. Nice. I hope that technical part isn't too confusing. It also somewhat confuses me, I'm not gonna lie, but now I need to set all of my filter items. So I'm gonna spend some time and do that. Probably gonna have to go get some more acacia logs and jungle logs, because I don't even think I have 41. So let's go see what we have in the base upstairs and then we can go collect whatever we need. Oh my gosh, my head. I'm definitely gonna have some work in this cave to do still, but that's also a future froggy problem. For now, let's just go see what we have and collect what we need. After checking in, we're gonna need to get some acacia, some cherry, and some jungle wood. So let's go head over to the cherry biome. And then the other two we'll find afterwards. 
At least we get to come to pretty biomes and we don't have to be in the cave anymore. Although I hope that our storage room when it's fully done can look half as pretty as a cherry grove. It won't be as sunny though and lighting is sometimes a challenge down below the ground. So that'll definitely be something I focus on. Maybe we can use some of these down there in the decorative parts near the mushroom blocks if they don't look weird. So I'll grab some. Not that far away, I found a savanna biome connected to the tiniest meadow I've ever seen. So I spent some time gathering some acacia wood. And I found a new jungle biome that I had never been to before, not that far away from the savanna. So I spent some time there gathering some jungle logs. And now that we have enough items, we can go ahead and set the filters for the system. So this one is birch. And then the next one is spruce. And then after that, I think it's jungle, then acacia. And finally, we have the crimson and the warped right next to it. And now that we know the basics of basically how it works, I'm going to have to do this a bunch more times. So I'm going to take a little break and get some coffee and then I'm going to get to work and I'll bring you guys back when I have a major update. Okay. I then spent the next several real life days mining out the area for the new storage build and building it up in a very basic sense, all the while gathering more redstone, logs and other items needed. I didn't want to start decorating until I was fully done setting up the system and making sure it worked. This was a huge grind for me as mining thousands of stone can be somewhat boring, but as I saw bits and pieces of the storage room coming together, I kept getting more and more inspired. I even live streamed making progress here on YouTube to continue to motivate me through such a large project and had so much fun chatting with you all. Before I even knew it, we were past day 800 in game, bringing this to my longest Minecraft hardcore world ever and making it almost 100 days since I started this project on day 717 in game. And when our storage hallways were all dug out and set up and hooked up to the system, this is how it was looking. Before we could finish up the decorations, I wanted to get the ceiling in on the inside where the drop area was. And this was a huge turning point in the project for me because this actually made it look like it was starting to get done. And honestly, I was ready for it. I just looked at my day counter and I have been working on this project already for 150 in-game days. It's been four or five days in real life and now that we have this kind of decorative thing going on, I want to continue that in the hallways. Each one of our storage pods has a decorative little shelf on the top where I want to add a bunch of little details like bookshelves, plants, leaves, candles, etc. Whatever we find that kind of looks cute and aesthetic to put up here. And I want to continue this idea along all of these hallways, having kind of different ones like this one. Maybe we can make a little flower box. We can add the pink petals in there and then hold it back with some signs on top of the moss. And even though we've only done two so far and we still have a lot to do, I think you guys kind of get the idea. For some of them, we could just take advantage of these like really big, pretty paintings with some flowers and then Perhaps we could knock out some of these red mushroom blocks for some bookshelves, kind of make like a little library section. And then of course the chiseled bookshelves will fill up with some books. Can't forget the flowers. And yeah, I like that. I think you guys kind of get the idea that I'm going for here. So I'm going to do all the other like 50 to 60 pods and then I'll bring you back. Okay, this took me way longer than I'd like to admit, but it's finally done. So I just want to show you a quick little overview and there's a bee there. How did that happen? Oh, I guess that's where the bees came from. I didn't realize that there were actually bees in that hive. Anyways, as you can see, I made like a little honey ones and I used the player heads from the data pack. You might remember that I added this data pack like in episode four or five. Well, the data pack's been updated for 120, so we have it here. And as you can see, it has its own little cool painting little table model now. It's awesome. I used some player heads I got from that data pack in a few different places in here. And I'm going to show you just some of my favorites here on Replay Mod. And as you can see from the selection of little decorative bits that I'm showing, I tried to keep them pretty simple, but like they fit in a storage room. And some of them are themed based on what kind of stuff is stored below. And this last one here with these mob heads is actually my favorite one. I don't know why. I just like that one so much. Anyways, I hope you guys like the ideas that I had and the way that I decorated the upper bits. But we are not done with this episode as we have to fix the tunnel over here. And then we have a lot of work to do upstairs as well. Oh, there goes the bee. Hi, Mr. Bee. Please don't fly into the middle. No, 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 no. I said don't. Wait, wait, come back. Well, that was kind of awkward. The bee's gone, but whatever, it's fine. 
I'm gonna do, I think, a gradient to this tunnel and I'll bring it down from like stone, maybe cobble to andesite to diorite to the smooth quartz. And then once that's done, we still have to do the upstairs room as well, which is going to take a while, I think. I have spent over 50 hours on this project so far and I'm so excited the finish line is within reach. And before I knew it, the tunnel was completely finished and I went back and added some redstone lamps into the sides of the walls so that way there was a little bit of light when you were falling down. And now that the tunnel is done, I think it's time that we work on one of the final phases of this project, which is going to be this cave here. Although I do kind of want to go to sleep first as I don't want to die while I'm gathering moss. Hey guys, I don't know where my bed is, so I'm gonna come snuggle up with y'all. Per usual. I have about a snack and a half of bone meal, so I just wanna come over here and grab some moss really quickly. And the reason that I wanna do it over here in this area that I've already been doing it in is that I'm gonna be doing a village transformation over here, and I'm gonna wanna use some of this area for the village as well. But the area that I've already terraformed is over there and it's quite flat down below. So this area all over here is also gonna be used, but I need to terraform a lot. And well, instead of digging up dirt, I can dig up moss. I think we're about two episodes away from that though, as next episode, we're gonna be making a moss farm and some other farms finally. And then I won't have to destroy any more of this beautiful sunflower plains biome. I'm so sorry. But I think it's finally time that we step up our game and start working on some bigger projects, which I know sounds really silly because we've worked on some pretty big projects already. But beyond the village transformation and all the farms that we're gonna be making, I also want to build a castle so bad this year. I wanna have like a little froggy mushroom kingdom kind of vibe going on. So don't worry, even though it's taken a long time, I still have a ton of plans for this world and we're gonna keep playing here until we die, which I genuinely hope that we never do. But enough about the future projects, we have a cave to complete. So the reason we need all this moss is because I wanna carry around this idea into the cave where we have like a moss to mossy cobble to cobblestone to stone gradient going on. We're also gonna to need to figure out a way to keep the axolotls out of the cave because I don't want them to fall to their death while entering the storage system on accident. I'm thinking we could probably fence off this area here with like warped fences but that's gonna be a later froggy issue. For now, let's deal with what's going on in here. It has occurred to me that I could probably just bone meal some of the moss into the floor in the cave. So I'll have to break into my secret bone meal stash and I've been making the tree farm spruce saplings into bone meal for a while. Luckily we have quite a bit, but we can basically replace a bunch of this stone and dirt and stuff on the ground for basically free since we can bone meal it. And then I don't have to waste any of the moss I picked up and I can use it for crafting mossy cobblestone. It's not a perfect system, but it'll work for now just while I get the bottom of this cave all mossed up. Just jumped down to get some more cobblestone and oh my gosh, the vibe in here, it's so good. Let's just grab a couple of stacks and we can craft up that mossy cobblestone right away. And we have the rest of the moss upstairs in a shulker, so we should be good to go. I then spent the next couple of hours in real life messing around with the cave and adding in some cobblestone, moss, and mossy cobblestone into the walls. I thought it would be a cool idea if I paid homage to the cave I made in my 118 Let's Play, so I kind of wanted it to be an upgraded version of that. I wanted this to feel very magical and alive in a way. And to make this feel a little bit more alive and have some more movement, I definitely wanted to go get some more spore blossoms, so I set off to look for another lush cave. I knew the location of two lush caves, but I had pretty much picked all of the spore blossoms from there, so it was time to take a little adventure around my world, and I even found a guy with a trident and killed him. And he dropped me another trident, let's go! I was pretty much searching far and wide for my world to find a new azalea tree until I finally came to this jungle here. And I'm sorry, I had to turn shaders off because it was lagging my PC with the amount of leaves and everything, but then I finally spotted an azalea tree. Right by the azalea tree, I found a big entrance into an open cave, and of course I went down because your girl needs some spore blossoms. And this cave was basically like winning the lottery as I wandered around for about 45 minutes and found so many spore blossoms. And then when I was back at my base, it was time to continue working on adding the details to the cave, including changing out the walls, adding stuff hanging from the ceilings like glowberries, spore blossoms, and leaves, and making sure this place really came alive with some extra details like amethyst and flowers and other things as well. And when it was all done, it was looking a little bit something like this. And honestly, I'm so happy with how it all came out. 
This project has taken me literally over 50 hours in real life and over 160 Minecraft days. But it's finally done and we have this awesome new storage system and a nice beautiful cave to get into it. I had so much fun making this system and decorating it and I just want to say thank you all so much for coming to the live streams and being there while I was building this. It was very, very fun. We also recently hit 100,000 subscribers here on the channel, so I just want to say thank you so much for your support on the channel and on the videos. It really, really means the world to me. Well, that's going to be it for today. Unfortunately, we are done with this episode, but expect a new one soon where we're going to be working on more projects and having a ton of fun together once again. I'll catch you guys in the next one, okay? Bye!